We lost game one by a lot. It was 117 to 94 as the final score. And so it's time for us to make a couple of changes. So based off some feedback from the comments and my own thoughts at the end of the episode last time out, here is the new rotation. A couple of things are different. The first is that Vanderbilt has been benched only because we need some more offense from the starters and we need some more height and a little bit better defense as well. I think that Bulbul's height gives us both of those and also better offense too. So he will start. We'll get about 34 minutes of action playing center only when uh, Payne is out um, in the third quarter. Otherwise, he'll be at power four the entire time. And we are going to have Payne also match up against Jared Allen instead to keep him more near the hoop um, so he can, you know, have better paint defense and get more rebounds because game one was one of his worst games of the entire playoffs. And I'm pretty sure it's because we had a match up against the power forward, which had him drawn out out of the paint for much of the game. So that's another change. And then I also did end up putting in Carney over Pollard. In the past, I actually have liked how Carney has um, handled the ball and, uh, you know, kind of acted as a point guard sometimes when we didn't have one on the court. So I think right now without Tyrese Halliburton playing for like, what, like nine minutes total, I think that can give Carney a couple of chances to um, come into more of his own as, you know, a uh, guy that can play point guard, shooting guard and small forward. So he will play there. And uh, we'll keep Kevin Herter and Zubots where they're at. Same thing for Kelton Johnson, Anderson, Payne, and Halliburton. But the bowl bowl change, uh, Venable coming off the bench, and uh, Carney coming in for Pollard are the biggest changes. I'm also going to start this next game by trying to deny ball for most players, not for Jared Allen, um, but for most other players, especially their, their, their shooters. I want us to do our best to deny them the ball on the outside and also another change i made was to switch guards off ball because they did run a couple of different actions where they had um you know guards setting screens and other guards coming off of screen so if we can switch those at the very least that gives us some better defense off ball which can help Otherwise, I'm going to see if we can just get better defense with Payne down in the paint. I think that can make a big difference. And Volbo as well, both guys being 7-2, should present some difficulties for um, any guys that want to try and take the ball into the paint in this next game. So, game two, let's go. We just went over all, all the changes there. And it's time. We're down 1-0, and we really need to get one back. I don't want to go down 2-0 in this series. So, here we go. Let's click play game. Bobo gets his first start of maybe the season or at least close to it. At least his very first start of the playoffs. So here we go. Game two of the NBA Finals starts now. A slow first quarter in game one was pretty much the difference in game one. We'll see if we can avoid the same story here. It was also a poor second half offensively and defensively from the Woodsman. So we'll we'll see if if uh, the adjustments that we made can uh, have that not happen here in this game. As Halliburton once again gets the game started with a bucket, did the same thing back in game one. He also played extremely well with over 30 points and over 10 assists. So we're gonna see if we can get some better play from him, or at least around the same level. We definitely need Keldon Johnson and uh, Anderson to shoot better at the very least as Keldon Johnson is called for the foul and Lambert got the bucket too. First points to put Cleveland on the board. Lambert was electric from beyond the arc in game one knocking down most of his three pointers at least four of them out of like six or seven he was very good. Anderson backdoor cut and paints pass is deflected by Jordan Poole not Jordan Poole Nicholas Poole and he will take it coast to coast. We've seen a couple of turnovers from game one that were really aggravating off of pick and roll coverage, but that was not the same case. But still, got to get that pass through. Halliburton over Allen can't get it to go, and Cleveland's back with it up 5-2. And there is a mismatch with Mobley against Halliburton. Easy buckets. They'll go right to the rim. We call timeout early on. Not even two minutes in. Payne sets the screen. Halliburton launches for three. That one's off, and Payne rips down the board and scores. 
Did not see many offensive rebounds from him in game one, but there's one early on. We'll see if that'll keep up. Garland finds Allen, and he scores over Payne. Nice pass, contested shot. Payne trying to challenge Jared Allen, and he does so, and it works. He's two for two. Averaging 16 points per game and 13 boards here in the playoffs and has been a defensive, just absolute machine. Garland gets inside. He drew, he drew Payne out with the Jared Allen screen and then eventually got to the rim. And it's a quick 11 points here in the first quarter. Not even three minutes in and they already have as much as we have with like three minutes left in game one. Payne has a jar loose by Nicholas Poole. Another steal for him. Already two here in the first quarter. Two turnovers by Payne. And got to start just not having those, I guess. I mean, what 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 more can you say? Poole for three. That one goes in. The Cavaliers, man. Off to a hot start. 14 points. Time cutting down. Coden Johnson. Finds Tyrese, he has to fire. His three is off the mark and Mobley pulls it down. Mobley, backdoor cut, but Bobo's right there to deflect the pass and steal it off of pool. Anderson, who has yet to take a shot here in this one. Five on the shot clock, he goes to Payne, he'll fire and his jumper is up and in. Six points for Payne, hasn't missed yet. Bull off the screen, gets inside, he finds Mobley wide open in the corner for three. And the Cavaliers have... Have they missed a shot? I don't know if they have, but I also want to see what happened here on this previous play because... Clearly our defense is getting torched right now in this one and... I think it's important to figure out why, so... Here's what happens, Pool comes off the screen and... Bobo is already way sagged off on Mobley. Allen sets like a, a, a pseudo screen and Bobo stays over there to help. Payne is off of Allen for a reason. And Bobo, I guess, didn't realize that Payne was just going to stay there. So that is on Bobo to have no awareness there. And I don't really know how to fix that other than <laughs> just hope it doesn't happen again. I can't really make him do anything. I already have the game plan set to... Uh, have no help on drives. So that's on Bobo. Simple as that. And then right after I got out of the pause, the lob deflects off of Bobo's hands. Mobley, quick bucket on the other end. 19 to 8. Genuinely, have they missed the shot to start this game? No, they have not. They have they are off to a perfect start. This is no time to panic. It's early on. Bobo, wide open three. Gotta cash it. And he does. Screen from Mobley. Garland out of a shot. Finds him. And he scores again. He races by Bobo. And Payne just can't deflect the shot. Mobley's got nine points. We only have 11. Halliburton steps out of bounds. Come on. We can't be doing this kind of thing this early on in this one. We can't. We are already down by 10. Come on, guys. Garland off the screen. Gets inside. Swatted by Payne. That's the first miss. Finally. Obol brings it up. He finds Anderson on the cut. There's a good pass. It's back to 8. We're going to try the same thing, except Garland will fire a 3 this time. And his deep shot's off the mark. On the other end, Bobo has a mismatch against Nicholas Poole. Will he attack it? Go up! Yes! And yes! Lambert feeds Mobley right at the rim over Bobo. Tough finish, no! There's that Bobo defense that I, I've been waiting for. Payne running into Allen and gets his second foul. It was called for a reach in a few minutes ago and... That was not a smart shot, but he got a second foul on Allen, which could be big. We'll see if he stays in the game. First free throw drops for Payne. It looks like they'll bring in Tinsley, Lawson, and Jacques Sine. So Lambert and Allen will take a seat. 
And Payne knocks down both. It's back to a four-point game. Good work. Lawson steps back, has a decent look, but misfires. And another miss by the Cavaliers. That opens up a opportunity for us to score as Coden Johnson somehow fits the ball into Bulbo, who stuffs it home. And just like that, it's 1921. A little spurt of our own here in the first quarter. Mobley the screen. Anderson stays in front of him, but he finds Lawson wide open for three, and this time he'll knock it down. Another example of help defense where I told us not to help. That's Keldon Johnson's man right there. Screen for Halliburton. He races to the rim and draws the foul on Sine. Couldn't get the bucket to go, but we'll take the foul on another big man. First one up and good. 85% from the line during the regular season was Tyrese Halliburton. And he knocks down both. Bando checks in for the Woodsman, as does Harris for the Cavaliers as he gets to the rim. Bucket and the foul on Halliburton. Sylvester Harris. We've seen plenty of games against him. Sometimes he lights us up and sometimes he's absolutely awful. We'll hope that it is uh, the latter of the two here in game two. Golden Johnson, wide open three. This time he'll not get down. We saw him miss plenty of those in game one. And that's a good sign here in game two. But we'll see if that'll uh, be the case for the entire game. Tanae cuts, but... Looks like Harris missed him. Screen from Mobley. Harris out of a shot goes back to him and Vando is right there for the steal. Travel? We're gonna start traveling in the finals? What's going on here? Herder checks in. Anderson moves to small forward as Coden Johnson takes his seat. We gotta fix these turnovers, man. That was just completely unforced. Backdoor cut by Sine, and the lob is up to him for the tip in. That was lost in that time on the assist. Anderson cuts. Payne finds him this time, and he'll lay it in for two through some contact from Harris. Mobley trying to attack the rim with Vando on him. Payne stays in the area, but Sine gets behind him and Mobley found him. Two quick buckets for him and both teams have gotten off to a flying start. Both teams over 75% here in the first quarter and still over two, or yeah, still over two minutes left. Anderson gets down low and missed the shot. Mobley was the one who was up there with the hand in his face and got the stop. Tinsley, the crossover, and the bucket over Halliburton. Can they slow down, please? Halliburton whips it into pain for the reverse jam. Nice pass once again. Don Payne's numbers down there. He's been a much better player here in the playoffs, at least offensively. Shot about 13% better. Lost in for three. No, and a foul is caught on Mobley. Loose ball will take... That freebie, and we take over down by five. Bando checks out and Carney checks in. Looks like it's actually Halliburton checking out. So Bando stays in. Anderson finds Herder, he'll fire a three. That one's got too much under it and Tanae boxes out Payne. Lawson waits for the screen. Tough shot off the glass and in. That was off like one foot. Bando to Carney on the baseline. He steps into a shot and knocks it down. That's the first shot he's made since he got benched a couple games back in uh, the WCF. It's good to see him getting off to a uh, decent start, but there has been almost no defense here in the first quarter by, by either team as Lawson hits again. Are they going to miss a shot? Come on. Anderson takes the screen and will fire in the face of Harris. No. The Cavaliers have the final shot of the quarter. Mobley 
against Vando. He wants to attack. It's jarred loose. And the quarter ends with a defensive stop by Vancouver. But we're down by seven. 37 to 30. There is no way this level of offense continues for the Cavaliers the entire game, right? If it does here in the second, I might have to make a couple of halftime adjustments in terms of our lineup. But the offense for us looked pretty good. So that was nice. But honestly, I think it's just uh, a case of uh, some guys hitting some, some more shots than they usually would as Garland gets a three to drop to start the quarter. We're down by 10 again. Halliburton gets down low. Reverse layup is up and in. I actually see him still playing pretty well. Six points, three assists so far. Screen for loss. And he'll fire a triple. And finally he misses a shot. Screen from Zubat. Sanderson comes off it and fires and hits from the mid-range. Need him to have a much better game here than in game one. He only had 17 points and shot pretty poorly I'd say so need him to get back to what we're used to like a 30 point game or something Lawson's wide open again and he missed it luckily for us shot clock at 5 Halliburton finds Carney he has to launch from 3 that one just rims out and Allen pulls it down that was a good look though we need more of those Lawson off the screen missed it again now he's having a cold spell here in the quarter, just as I thought. The role players are not going to beat us all game, but they will have their spurts. As ours, you know, sometimes do. Anderson over the top to Zubots for the Tomahawk Slam. We're back within four. Screen from Allen. Garland gets around it. Bounce pass, but Vando jumps in and gets the steal. That's some great defense right there. He's already had a couple of those forced turnovers. Zubats goes to Anderson. Now we'll come over for the screen. Anderson steps back and fires from the stripe, but it's off the mark, tipped out, but Lawson's there. Garland, out of a shot, finds Lambert. That was gonna be a block, but instead it's a three ball that drops for the Cavaliers. We cannot leave Lambert open, man. He's too good of a shooter. We call timeout again. The Cavs have yet to use one of theirs. After the timeout, what are we doing? How do we have this every game? We just turn the ball over on the inbound pass. And of course, the Cavaliers capitalize. It's pool. Seems like the teams that we face so far in the playoffs, especially... The Spurs and the Cavaliers have role players that just nonchalantly knock down shots every single game. They hardly have poor shooting nights, but we seem to get uh, several a game from ours. Garland for three, no dice after the Halliburton make on the other end. The six-point game, almost four minutes gone here in the seconds, but so needs some better defense. The offense has been pretty good. Halliburton tries again, but it won't fall this time. There's a mismatch down low for Lamberts. You got Bull Bull guarding Lawson right now. Got to find a switch off ball. Looks like Lawson will take the screen. He finds Garland wide open. This off ball action is killing us, just like in game one. They're getting wide open. Halliburton takes the screen, gets down low, hands off to Zubats. He finds Herder in the corner for a wide open look and he'll knock it down. Nice answer. Double screens for Garland. You get around it, he poked the ball out, but Allen eventually gets back to it. That was Bobo with, that, with that, uh, that, that deflection. Garland for a quick three. That one's off the mark this time. Mismatch down low for Bobo. We feed it to him against Pull. He will lay it in for two. That's what I'm talking about. Nine points for Bobo here in this one. Already giving us more offense than we ever saw him give us against the Spurs. 
Cool. Guarded by Carney. Gets down low in the paint. Bobo's there to help, and he's called for the foul instead. First free throw. Up and in. Pool has already been a very annoying player to face. Been very efficient at the stripe and from the field. As Payne checks in, Bobo stays out there, and I guess Fando's taking a seat, or Zubats is rather. But still a six point game, trying to just slowly wiggle, wiggle our way back in as Payne skies inside for the jam. After a Cavaliers timeout, they inbound it, and Lawson has it as Keldon Johnson has checked back in, and Lawson's shot is off again. You gotta hope that he can keep missing those. I'm pretty sure he's missed five straight. The lob up to Payne is. Well, it was there, but Payne missed the dunk. Come on, man. That would have been electric. Mobley for three. Don't do this to me. Come on, man. Really? Payne finds Halliburton. Wide open. He didn't take the three. He'll take the screen instead. He gets down low. Back to Payne for the open jumper. It's no good. Gotta hit those. We know he can. Pool finds Garland. And he missed the shot. So that was an open look too. Even though Anderson came out of nowhere. To try and get some kind of hand up at the end of it. Anderson trying to get open off ball. But Mobley sticks with him. It's Bobo instead over to Keldon Johnson for the three. It's contested, but it rattles in either way. Big shot back to four. Garland gets the feed, goes back to Lambert. Good passing by the Cavaliers. Wood's been staying in front so far. Lawson has to fire, and he missed it again. Honestly, let him keep shooting, but obviously have a hand up. Nice pass to Bowl Bowl, but his shot's off the mark. He's there with the own offensive rebound, which he stuffs home. And now it's a one-score game. Four minutes to go until the break. Lob up to Mobley is there, and he stuffs it in. Got around Bobo off the off-ball screen. 14 points for Mobley. Has missed only one shot so far in the game. High screen from Payne. Halliburton slices inside, finds Keldon Johnson for a wide open look, but he can't knock it down. Keldon, I beg of you, man. We got to hit these open looks with consistency. The Cavaliers have hardly passed up those opportunities as Lambert gets the lob this time from Lawson. Another off-ball play that frees up somebody. Anderson. Takes the screen and throws it right to Mobley. Couldn't get the ball over the top to Payne. Lambert, quick trigger on the other end, but he missed it. We're back with it down by six. Halliburton has his pass afflicted by Mobley and stolen to the hands of Lambert. Pool is fouled in transition. God, these turnovers are brutal. And we aren't forcing many. It's just been Vando who's done the damage on the defensive end and he's barely out there. Nobody else has done a whole lot. And Poole once again is perfect at the charity stripe. Arnie to Anderson. Has yet to fire off a three in this one. Payne throws up a shot and that one rattles out. Right now we just can't keep pace with the Cavaliers offense. Pinsley off the screen. Goes back to Mobley, he finds Poole. Shot clock winding down. Sone out to pull again. His shot is good. That's what I'm talking about, dude. He's so obnoxious. Only because he's been playing well. Anderson waits for the screen. Fires off it. And that one drops. Only eight points for him. Four for seven. Need him to get some more looks. He's knocking him down. But really, I mean, he hasn't really had too many... Good opportunities, but when he has, he's generally been pretty good. That shot from Harris is off the mark. With the chance for us to get it back within six before halftime. Off on the shot clock. Anderson tries again. Mid-range jumper. It's good. Harris takes the Mobley screen. Out of a shot, finds him. Bobo gets back on defense. 
Good stuff so far. Harris has to jack it up, and of course he makes it. This is crazy. Carney trying to respond. His triple is good. The Cavs once again have the final shot of the quarter. They go to Mobley. Back and down, Bobo. Get the stop, big man. Come on, he can't. And we're down by eight at halftime. 66-58. No defense in sight. How were they let back in the building? Start of the third quarter. I don't want to make any adjustments quite yet. I feel confident and I believe in this team to go on a run and take the lead at some point in the second half. We don't want to do it by the third or by the fourth quarter rather and it's still it's still um, a Cavaliers lead by however much I might make adjustments at the start of the fourth quarter. Maybe even some during the middle of the third quarter if the same exact thing is still happening. But uh, I have to diagnose things as they happen. As Poole gets down low, off ball, got by Anderson. We're not having, well, we are having a lot of issues actually on the defensive end, especially trying to guard these guards off ball. They've just been so quick off, quick off these screens. Anderson's jumper is off the mark, but Payne is there for the putback stuff. Garland steps back and pulls the trigger, and it rolls around the rim and in. Come on, dude. Don't tell me it's going to be just like game one. He once again had, you know, a fairly poor shooting first half. 8 points, 38%. It was 33% and 7 points in game one. Is he going to drop like 20 plus in the second half? Maybe so. Anderson bricks his first three-pointer attempt of the day. Interesting stuff there. And we're down by 11. Double screens come over for Poole. How do we guard this? Well, we get stuck on it, and he missed the shot, luckily for us. But Godin Johnson grabs the board. He hasn't done much here in this one. Only has, like, one made shot. Anderson feeds Bobo. Mismatch against Garland. Just attack the rim. Attack the rim. Attack the rim. Back him down. There you go. Both teams have shot over 60% here in the game. They just have taken a lot more threes than we have, and they've made more of them. What a shocker. Mobley back to Jared Allen. Fade away. No way! The lob goes right to Allen. Payne is like three seconds late. What was that? Our lob attempts throughout the playoffs have been mostly horrible as Lambert gets down low and scores through the contact and... Just like that, we're down by 13 points to start the second half. Payne attacking Allen. Got the foul. No bucket, though. That is number three on Jared Allen. Payne's got 14 points, six boards, but still really haven't seen him play much defense besides that one block in the early goings of the game. He really hasn't had many chances, to be honest. Allen hands off to Garland. Halliburton standing in front so far. He lobs up to Allen for the lob. And we just can't stop him. Just can't. High screen. Halliburton back to Payne. Wide open long two. Got it this time. But I'm pretty sure we had this exact same score line during game one. 77 to 66. And we eventually got blown out by like 23 or something. How are the way math works? Lambert the screen. Payne's on Garland somehow, and he just blows by him, man. Whatever we show them, whatever we have shown them, they have an answer for. Anderson takes the screen, fires the mid-range jumper, and another one falls for him. He's been living in the mid-range jumper so far in this game. Lambert off the screen, fires, and hits! Can you guys miss an open look? I'm out, Woodsman. This Cavaliers team is different, man. Bando checks in. The first time here in the half. 
If this keeps up for the next couple of minutes, I will have to make some kind of a change because defense is not working out, like at all. Shot clock, it's five. Anderson has to make something happen. He launches a three, and it's off the mark again. If he's not going to hit his threes, and nobody else is going to even try to take them, or we're going to be in trouble because the Cavaliers have taken plenty, and they're knocking them down with ease. Allen hands off to Garland. He stays in front. Time counting down. No way. Okay. They finally missed the shot. Double screens for Halliburton. He finds some space. He finds Coden Johnson wide open. And finally, a shot falls for Vancouver. Lawson frees himself up. Come on, man! I get you had a bad second quarter, but you couldn't go... One more quarter? Alliburton trying to answer. Can't do it though. And Mobley rips it down. Cavs up by 13 points. Garland open three. That's a line drive and Anderson gets the board. Cavaliers get back on defense quickly. Anderson to Coden Johnson. Back to Vando though and the offense kind of resets a little bit. Anderson attacking Lawson. He gets down low. And how do you miss that? There was nobody actually in his face at all. Lawson for three again. Missed it this time. Got to put a run together here. Pain to Anderson. Thought twice about it. Off the screen. He'll step back. Lambert stays in front. Payne has to fire. It's good over Allen somehow. Thought that was blocked for a moment. Screen for Lambert. He pulls the trigger from three. Unbelievable. And Keldon Johnson went under there, which is not part of the game plan. How do I, how do I make the game plan work if some of these guys aren't going to follow it? There have been several, several buckets precisely because they have not followed the no-help game plan or the go-over game plan on screens. I don't... I, I, I just don't get it. Halliburton. Back to pain. This time the pick and roll works, but we haven't gone to it a lot. Garland off the screen. Back to Mobley. Wide open triple. He's been cashed from there today and hasn't missed yet. Five more threes for the Cavaliers. And they lead by 15 points. Their lead just continues to grow ever so slightly. Keldon Johnson gets the feed and gets a nice bounce off the rim and in. Lawson finds a mid-range jumper. And it rims out. And Payne steps out of bounds on the rebound. They get it back. You've got to be kidding me. When was the last time the Cavaliers had a turnover that was actually stupid like we've had in both games so far? I haven't seen it here in game two at the very least. Tinsley's wide open for three. I don't even care that he missed. How is he that open, man? That is incredible. Halliburton gets down low and lays it in against Sané. Down by 11 points, though, and no end in sight on the on our defensive end. We can't get a stop to save our lives. One wide open miss does not count. It's not a stop. A stop is playing good defense and having to miss the shot or getting a block or forcing a turnover. Sine sets the screen. Lawson over Payne. Hits! Payne. With the ball, he finds Coden Johnson. He attacks the rim. Bucket and the foul. That's a big bucket right there from number 11. The foul goes against Harris. The free throw is up and good as Carney and Vando check in for the Woodsman. Payne gets the steal with a bad pass by Tinsley. That is the first legit stop we've had in a while. Carney, back and down, Tinsley gets around him with a spin move. Great job. He's been pretty solid here in this one. The Cavaliers have 15 points off of 10 
Vancouver turnovers. That's been a big storyline here in the game. Those dumb turnovers have, have cost us a lot. Lawson overheard her, missed the shot, and Payne pulls it down. A chance for us to get it back within six, perhaps. 24 boards for us, 16 for the Cavaliers. It's been a high-scoring affair. Neither team has shot like below 60% in this one. Payne hands off to Keldon Johnson. He wants to attack Harris again. Goes over him. Foul again. No bucket this time, but the second one on Harris here in the quarter. Johnson's now up to 14 points. After I was talking some crap earlier, he has really made a nice couple of plays here in the second. And both free throws drop for him. We do get it back to six points. And still a few more possible uh, chances left for us to make it even closer. Got a lock down to in, in the quarter and make it very competitive here in the fourth. Once we get there, though. Harris waiting for somebody. He finds Lawson. Mobley has it poked out. Today gets it back and throws up a shot. This, these are the kinds of shots they're hitting. Are you kidding me? That had no business going in whatsoever. When was the last time we had a shot like that? Seriously. When was the last time? Carney to Herder. Hasn't scored yet. He'll go back to Carney for the three, but that one's off. Payne gets the board, throws it up, and scores the putback. It's back to six. Let's lock down, get a stop, get a bucket, and it's a three or four point game in the fourth quarter to start. But instead, Harris is wide open for three. Mobley gets the offensive board. Another missed opportunity for us to get an actual stop there. Harris, second chance. He missed again. We're so lucky. Let's make this last shot count. Garney off the screen. He's going to go to Herter for sure. For three to end the quarter. Bang! Yes, sir! 94-91. 12 minutes left. It's been a close game pretty much the whole time. Had one instance where, you know, we were down by... By... Several, several scores, but now it's back to within one. Start of the fourth quarter. No adjustments just yet. Maybe I'm waiting too late, but I feel like we're, we're showing that we can possibly bring it back. As Anderson misses the shot, Payne pulls it down and misses the putback. We got to score that that time. That was a good look for Anderson and a good... Look at a putback, too. I mean, we, we just missed both. Garland. A triple in the face of Anderson. No. Alan Burton pulls it down. He's definitely not been as aggressive offensively as he was in game one, but I think so far he doesn't really have to be. But he could if he wants to. He lobs it up, and Allen just is there. That was, like, w once again, the lobs are, like, the one thing that Halliburton does not have going for him. Tinsley jacks it up and missed it. Another missed shot by the Cavs. Will give us a chance to tie it up or make it a one-point game. Halliburton lost the handle and throws it right to Harris. You cannot seriously think that I, like that pass was never going to get through. Never. And now Tinsley draws a foul. God, these turnovers have been so brain dead. And it's costing us time and time again. The free throw is good for Tinsley. The second one is up and in too. The five point game and now the fucking death bringer Nicholas Poole has checked in. Can't wait to see what he's going to cook up. Alliburton finds Anderson. He won't launch from three. Garland stays in front. Screen from Payne. Anderson will fire this time from three, and he'll knock down a wild shot. Finally, some kind of a crazy shot goes for us when the Cavaliers have hit a couple of them so far in this one. It's down to two. 94-96. We still have not led in, like, since, like, our, our first bucket of the, of the first quarter. And I'm not going to have a chance on this possession either. Halliburton finds Anderson. He'll pull the trigger again, but that one's offline. 
Lambert pulls it down. On the other end, he'll back down Halliburton. Gets to the rim, Payne comes over and swats the shot. That is the help defense that we need. Doesn't have to be every time, but that time it was perfect. There is a mismatch down low if we can find it. We have Lambert on Payne. We're not going to take advantage though. Anderson with the shot clock winding down has to get one up. And the mid-range jumper falls. Another one from that same spot. He's got 17. Lambert hands off to Garland. He gets inside and the soft touch off the glass is good. Nice runner. Anderson gets the feed. His floater is up and in. Nice pass by Halliburton. Tough shot too. Right now, this fourth quarter is just about us clawing our way to a lead. It's going to be tough. Might take a while, but I have confidence in us getting there. Garland for three, though, will make us wait a bit longer. Halliburton hesitates. Working on Tinsley. Gets down low, hands off to Payne. He lost the handle. We turn the ball over again. How many times is this going to happen? Anderson steals it back from Garland. Holy crap. Alliburton goes to Vando. Out to Anderson. His triple misses again, but Vando pulls it down. The putback and the foul on Jared Allen is fourth. So those two trade words. Bobo will check in in place of Payne, which is not part of the game plan. Um, I don't like that at all. I'm assuming next set ball, Payne checks back in, but... I don't want to have Bando and Bubble out there for too long. I need Payne out there on defense. Garland finds a decent look and hits from the charity stripe. Don't tell me he's going to start cooking us, man. He's already got 20 points down. We had 8 in, in the first half. I, I just know what's going on here. We saw this in game one. Herder has it. It's off the screen from Bando. Back to him, but Allen deflects the pass. And it's stolen again. How many times have we seen this as Bull Bull swats pool shot off the glass? That might be his first actual missed shot of the game. And to Halliburton, pass deflected. Halliburton gets back to it. Shot clock winding down. Halliburton has to fire over Mobley. That one swims around the rim but misses. Double screens for Garland. Decent look for three. Here we go, man. Here we go. I saw this from a mile away. How did I know it was telegraphed? Halliburton pulls the trigger for three. That one's missing. Come on. Time counting down. Lambert has to jack it up. Left it short and Vando gets the board. Under six to play in regulation of game two. We need to start scoring some buckets and getting some stops along with it as Bull Bull throws it up. And he scores. It's back to five. We've shot better than they have, but they've hit more threes. And that's pretty much it. They've hit more threes. There's a screen coming for Garland for sure. Yep, there it is. For Garland, fire for three. No, but it'll get down low. And Bobo is called for a personal foul? What are you talking about? That's a charge, brother. You can't be serious. Golden Johnson and Payne check back in. Bando takes a seat, so does Herter. Cavaliers have it up by five, with just over five to go in regulation. Screen for Lambert. He'll fire from the elbow, and he hits with pain in his face, man. These guys have hit some really tough shots, and Lambert is seven for ten. Bobo pulls the trigger. His three ball rattles out, though. What is with our three-point shooting, man? It really has never been good in the playoffs. Just hasn't. At least this season. I just don't get it. So far, pretty much every other team that we have faced has been better than us from beyond the arc. And now Halburn's called for a shooting foul. We're watching this close game once again slip away. We had a chance to close the gap, and we were unable to. There's still plenty of time left, but 
watching it go back to nine is just hurts the soul. Anderson cuts. Bobel finds them. Easy buckets. Let's see if that'll spark something on the offensive end as Cleveland calls timeout. Lambert, quick three on the play after the timeout is off the mark. It's still over four to go. Got to put a run together here. Who can step up here in the winning moments of game two? Be a savior for the Woodsman, perhaps. Keldon Johnson back to Anderson, covered well by Lawson. Green from Payne. Anderson waits and fires and knocks it down. It's back to four. Garland gets the switch to Payne, and Lambert's wide open for three, but he left it well short, and now Payne's fouled by Garland. Loose ball foul. That's just his first of the game. But not really anything uh, damaging there, but Lambert was wide open, dude. Like that, if, if that shot goes in, a comeback is very difficult from that point with how the Cavaliers have been playing. But a bucket here could be crucial. Halliburton to Keldon Johnson, swatted by Mobley. Every time we have a chance, we can't make it count. Garland off the screen, got the switch. We're staying in front, Lawson's open for three. He missed the shot, Payne gets the board. Lucky break once again. Alley. Hit the ball, waiting for Anderson to get open off the screen. There he is. He fires, and it's good. Two-point game. Come on, fellas, we can do this. Anderson's got 26. He leads us. Garland leads the Cavs with 25, as they will use their penultimate fi penultimate timeout, not fine out. Jesus. Lambert inbounds the ball to Mobley. See if the Woodsman defense can get a stop here. We're just going to watch the entire possession, I think, because why not? Lawson can't lay it in, but Anderson's called for his first foul at a very interesting time. Refs, not sure there is a foul there. Lawson's been spotty in this one, but he's made some plays for sure. The free throws are good, and it's back to four. Again, we have... Really not led, I'm pretty sure, since the first bucket of the game. So, that tells you all you you, you got to know about how tough it's been to have this be a close game. You can't miss the dunk again, Payne. No! No! You can't! You can't be doing this to me! Lawson to Garland. We're down by six. I just cannot believe that! Anderson! Garland on the other end scores. Game's fucking over. Garland is fouled by Payne and he scores. This is... This is incredible! He's getting MVP chance, man. Free throw drops. Nine point game. We're down 2 0. We're down 2 0. Bowl bowl for three. Got it. Doesn't matter though. Doesn't matter. We can't play defense. Incapable of getting a stop when it matters. Screen from Mobley. He gets to the rim. Nobody steps up this time. You're telling me. That the one time you guys want to follow the game plan of no help, it's at the end of the game. When Garland has a wide open lane. I've almost convinced myself that we have to switch everything. We just had a five second violation. Unbelievable, man. Unreal. What a sorry performance on the defensive end. Once again, worse than in game one. 
Unreal. I'm going to have to legitimately look over the game tape of this one before game three and base everything off of that game, off of this game. I, I just have to. I'm going to have to actually watch some goddamn film because holy shit. Garland does in game two what he did it back in game one, but only better. He had eight points in the first half and ends up with 36. Just incredible, incredible play. I just, what, what else can I say? Like, am I supposed to be forced to like switching guys off of screens when it's him? Because then we, we, we just get mismatches out, out the goddamn wazoo. Great day for him. Mobley missed one total shot, eight for nine. Four steals, one block. We threw the ball right to him four times in a row. Not one of those was an actual good steal by him. He just had the ball thrown right to him. Same for Jared Allen, by the way. He literally had the ball thrown to him four times in this game. Lambert once again makes us pay. Poole makes us pay. Lawson makes us pay. The role players step up. And Lawson shot poorly, like, overall. But, I mean, in general, he played well. He had eight assists. So... He played well, and uh, yeah, I mean, they had one block this game when they had like, what, eight or nine last game, and um, that seems to have had no effect on the outcome. Ah, oh, man, this is, whew, this is tough. This is even more tough than the Spurs series, and that one was tough, you guys know. Anderson played well, and we still lost. Payne played well, we still lost, despite the five turnovers. He and Halliburton made some god-awful throws, man. Holy Crap. Herter was not as bad as, as I thought he was. I did not give him credit during the game, but he actually was pretty good. Carney was too. In fact, the only guy who even played like bad was Halliburton. And Payne, if you count his, his uh, turnovers, which you probably should. Because we had 16 in total. Like, dude. 16 turnovers. They had 7. And... I can't see how many points they had off of those turnovers now, but they had 13 fast break points. We had more rebounds than them, and both teams shot pretty much the exact same from three and from the field and from the charity stripe. This was as close as a game as you can get. We lost because we threw the ball to them 12 times. That was why we lost. Genuinely, I'm not entirely sure how to prevent those turnovers. Like, sure, I could go back and look to the playbook i will go back and look at the footage of this game to you know look at the ga game film and see you know what the hell we're doing off ball what we're doing wrong off ball what we're doing uh, uh wrong on ball on screens because that seems to be a prominent um issue as well but i have a feeling that if i change anything defensively they're gonna answer back with like some other crazy stuff so this is tough, and uh, frankly, I like the, the uh, lineup that we have for the offense. That was frustrating. I'm clearly, I'm clearly flabbergasted, trying to figure out what to do. Um, but that comes with uh, playing a team in the finals like this. It was not going to be easy, so uh, we knew this going into it. So let me know your thoughts down below because, I mean, clearly this was a much better performance than than game one. So, the changes that we uh, made seem to have worked, but we're going to make some defensive adjustments now too. And maybe I should have made some during the game. So, uh, let me know your thoughts down below from what you saw on your screen, because you guys might have noticed things that I haven't noticed. So, let me know down below in the comments your thoughts on any uh, possible adjustments. Again, I, I like this current lineup. I think we have better shooters out there. I think we... We're more consistent. We are better off ball um, on the offensive end, getting open. Um, it's just about finding out the defensive side of things. So we're down 0-2. We're going back home for two games in a row. So it's not over yet unless we lose the first game. Then it might be over there. But uh, game three is crucial. It's must win. 
So I'll see you guys there. And uh, I look forward to your comments and uh, all of our discussion down below. So until game three, thanks guys for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in game three. Peace.